What's up, Fragrant World? Welcome back to another Stay Fresh production. My name is Justin Copeland, and on this channel, Stay Fresh Productions, we talk about everything fragrance related. Any interest in that kind of content, welcome to the right place. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Join the Fresh Squad today. Improve, increase, enhance, evolve, elevate your freshness. Your freshness being you, bringing your best self into every situation and scenario, using fragrance as a foundation of that. You will feel it and others will smell it. Now, I got an interesting topic for you today. The title of the video is, What is the Best Men's Fragrance? Now, we already know that is a highly subjective question to ask with no objective answer. So what I actually mean by this is, what makes a man's fragrance? What we're doing today, we have 11 fragrances here. They all smell completely different from each other. However, the one thing that they do have in common is their names. All 11 of these fragrances use the word man in some form or fashion, whether it's in French or Italian or English, pour homme, homme, l'homme, uomo, man, whatever it may be, they are focused around slapping on the bottle, this is for men. So I really try to stick to the fragrances in my collection that solely use that word as the primary title for the fragrance. Now, this is a small sampling tiny sampling of all the fragrances out there that use the word man in the title of the fragrance as the primary identifier. But it'll give you an idea of my point of this video. And my point is, again, all these fragrances smell different. They're all from different periods of time, mostly in the past, you know, 30, 40 years. So the question is, what does a man smell like? What is a man supposed to smell like? Obviously we can say, well, I guess it's evolved over time, but was it ever one thing? No, it never was because even over time there's been variety in every time period. So I think it begs the question, should anyone smell like anything in particular? Just using it as a bit of a view of the subjectivity and arbitrariness and the marketing of fragrances when it comes to gender. Nonetheless, let's dive into these fragrances and I'll kind of show you what I mean. So the only order these are in is chronological. The first one up here, this is from 1984, from the house of Giorgio Beverly Hills, and this is called Giorgio for Men. This was very popular when it was out, and this is kind of in that Sheepra realm of things. Lots of oak moss, mossy, woody, a little bit fresh. There's a slight tinge of something almost animalic, but not overtly so. And even a bit of sweetness in here, maybe some honey or something like that. It is something, honestly, I would expect to smell on a businessman golfing in the 1980s. That's what it smells like to me. I smell golf club. And frankly, a lot of fragrances during this time did smell in this profile. People would smell this and consider it, okay, this is manly. Let's move on. Five years later, 1989, we got Sung Home. Just to be clear, this is not a full synopsis of the continuum of men's fragrances. Obviously, there's a lot of gaps and a lot of holes. I'm only focusing on the small sample size I have from my collection of fragrances that use the word man. Again, just to be clear. So yes, I'm skipping over many fragrances, some of which I even have, but they just don't have this name. Okay, Sung Home. This, it smells like the 1980s, but it is leaning towards what the 1990s would really bring in terms of men's fragrances, which is that very clean, leaning aquatic, very fresh, you know, this kind of vibe was really becoming a thing, kind of leaving the animalic, dark, woody mossiness in the background or off the table altogether. Very soapy scent, very aromatic scent, herbaceous. Complex still, very complex. A lot of earlier fragrances in the designer realm did tend to be much more complex than the ones we find today. Again, regarded as a man's scent, perhaps a little less so than the Giorgio if we're going by rough and rugged and brashness as what makes a man's scent a man's. Again, this is in the eye of the beholder and a lot of people think this way, but a lot of people don't. This is definitely on the cleaner side of things, but I still see an older gentleman rocking this fragrance. All right, 2006. Yes, we're jumping ahead quite a bit here. Loam from Yves Saint Laurent. 2006 release, highly acclaimed fragrance, completely different from what we just talked about. Obviously, again, lots has happened in between, but where we end up by this point in time is a softness to a man's fragrance, a sweetness, more of a pronounced sweetness, less woodiness, 
more subtle. This is ginger, this is citrus, this is vetiver and tonka bean. It's sweet, a little bit woody, it's bright, it's very inviting. Again, it's subtle, something that a gentleman would wear, but not overtly masculine. I think a lot of women could wear this fragrance. Again, what makes a man's fragrance what it is? Let's keep going. Now, here comes the wrench in it all. 2011, we get Dior Homme. Now, this is one of those fragrances that men who wore this when it came out, when it came out, so back in the mid 80s, those men, if they smelled this fragrance, they would be like, what? This is a man's fragrance, this is a perfume. A woman is supposed to wear this. It smells like a woman's purse. But Dior said, no, this is for men. Dior Homme, we are redefining what a gentleman smells like. We are lifting up the idea of the metrosexual man, the man who is confident but is chic and well-dressed. This changed the game. Powdery, waxy, sweet, leathery, unlike anything that came before it, unlike anything that has come since. So again, this is what a man could smell like, according to Dior. Okay, 2014, we see Guerlain L'Homme Ideal, the original. Now, I wouldn't call this a game-changing fragrance. I wouldn't call it a hallmark, but it does stand out as something that is different, that has been different in the continuum. Definitely not a fresh scent. This is not a fresh men's fragrance. This is on the sweeter side of things, which wasn't always a thing for men's fragrances overtly sweet vanilla tonka bean kind of fragrances fruity you know that's not something that was always around for men in the men's mass market now this is delicious it kind of has a cherry vibe you get almond sweet and creamy it's woody it's leathery it's soft it's handsome it's something to wear during the evening time it's a beautiful scent for a man maybe not quite as metrosexual as dior own but leaning in that sweeter territory for sure again this is what a man could smell like according to Guerlain sweet and handsome now this is an interesting one 2015 we see this fragrance and this is a flanker I was trying to exclude flankers but I don't have the original Bottega Veneta Pour Homme Extreme now the original would easily be here if I had it but I don't but this does kind of smell similar to the original. This smells like stuff that came out in the 1980s. So we have a heart backwards in this regard. Again, poor Ohm, clearly here. A lot of people would smell this and say, without a doubt, this is for a man. This is green, piney. It is leathery, it is earthy, a little bit fresh, but mostly on that green, woody side of things. Again, some might say unmistakably masculine. So we have kind of Bottega Veneta saying, nope, we're gonna veer back in this direction. This is what a man should smell like, in our opinion. So we have overlap here. It is not completely linear. Again, there's always variety. Although we saw this in the 80s, we see it now too. Now, 2016, I'm gonna talk about these together because they came out in the same year, but one definitely had more notoriety than the other. We have Roberto Cavalli Uomo. Very interesting take on what a man could smell like. This is sweet, spicy, and floral. You have sweet violet along with sweet honey. We have some saffron making it spicy. You got tonka bean in the base. A relatively simple fragrance, again, on the sweeter side of things, but the floral nature, which is something we're seeing more prominence of as time goes on with men's fragrances, is really taking hold here. Adding a very handsome quality, by no means a rugged or ultra masculine quality, but something that, again, maybe the more metrosexual guy would wear when he wants to, again, smell the way he looks. So there's Roberto Cavalli Uomo. That same year, we have Prada Lome. Using Iris, once again, which Iris has really started to take prominence in the designer market from the time that Dior really pushed it at the front. And this makes it a very clean and soapy iris. A touch of a sweetness in there as well, but fresh, soapy, clean iris, a little powdery. Again, nothing like what we saw even the year prior from the Bottega Veneta, but still regarded as a man's fragrance. Okay, 2017, we see Argos Porol. Now this 
kind of straddles, I would say. This smells like things that could have come out in the 80s in a way, like something like Green Irish Tweed that does bear resemblance to that green, fresh, citrusy. But there is something about it that is quite modern. It's not overly mossy, it's not overly woody. It has no bit of animalic nature in here. It is clean, it is citrusy, it is woody. It is fresh, again, a little bit green. Kind of a timeless fragrance, similar to something like Green Irish Tweed, which is, I believe, a timeless fragrance. Does not smell like the 1980s. But if anything, it leans a little bit more towards what a classic style of man's fragrance would be. So people smell this, they say, yep, smells like a man's fragrance. I don't even question it. But let's see what comes next. Now our final two fragrances here, both came out in 2018, both quite different from one another. So the Argos Porome, which we talked about from the previous year. Again, pretty unmistakably masculine. Same would go for Zaharoff Signature Pour Om. This definitely is created to be a men's fougere fragrance. It smells a little bit like that barbershop style scent. Very clean, creamy, and sweet, and aromatic, and woody, and spicy. Again, reminiscent of men coming out of the barbershop, which is, again, pretty dang masculine and something that harkens back to older fragrances that came out years before this. So yeah, definitely a man scent as many would say. But that same year we see this, Lolita Limpica Ohm. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a rebottling and re-release of the original All Masculon. Never smelled that one. But this totally different interpretation of what a man smells like. Quite sweet, lots of licorice, lots of anise. It's spicy, it's boozy, it's creamy, it's woody. It's kind of a playful profile. There's something not super serious about it, but there's something quite distinctive because it's quite unique. Nothing smells quite like Lolita and Pika Ohm. Again, made for men. So again, what does this all mean? What it means is that you can wear whatever you want whether it has ohm on the bottle or not. We're talking about ingredients. We're talking about materials coming from nature that we did not create most of the time if we're talking about natural ingredients or naturally derived ingredients. We didn't make these things. We didn't make lavender masculine. But yes, look at this lavender plant. Look at it. Doesn't it just look like a man? No, nothing about this looks masculine. Wear what you want. If that's the Ohm fragrances, that's great. Just keep in mind that marketing is arbitrary. And that goes for men and women. Wear what smells amazing to you. That's all I'm saying. I would love to know your opinions on this. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this topic of what makes a men's fragrance. We could do the same thing with women's fragrances as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.